Now we will listen to this experiment, interesting experiment of the transformation of the bank into an agile organization, including the HR organization. So, ladies and gentlemen, the HR director and the agile coach, please welcome Eric and Morten. <laughs> Thank, welcome. You. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. So it's, it's good to be back in Sweden for the people who don't know me. I, I lived five years in Gothenburg uh, when I was heading up HR for Mölnike Healthcare, Swedish Meta company, before I went to the bank. Um, and I have to say, I never would have thought that working in a bank could be much more dynamic than working in medical devices. And I think when you hear the story, hopefully you will find out a little bit uh, why. So I will do the first part of the presentation. Eric then will... Uh, take off a little bit half uh, and what we want to do with you is, is share the story on how ING Bank transformed from a traditional bank into a more agile bank. We have a vid little video clip in the middle as well uh, but, but that's the story and I think it's good to give a bit of context and so this is how our offices uh, look like in the Netherlands, a couple of pictures around that um, and it might look quite common as long as well the, the Swedish offices are, I've seen but if you look in the banking financial institutions, uh, it's, it's normally marble and it's old wooden furniture, etc. So next to making you know, a new organization, a new culture, etc., we also refurnished all the offices we had at the same time. What happened in the... That's very fancy. Um, this slide is normally the slide where if myself uh, or one of my colleagues in the board from ING uh, start a presentation with, and it illustrates a big elephant with the orange color, which is the ING color, and then some of the greyhounds. And what it tries to say is, what we're trying to do is to ensure we keep the volume and you know the the memory of an elephant, so an old old big animal, but we want to make it agile. We want to make it flexible as a greyhound. So we don't want to be a greyhound. We still want to be a big organization representing in most countries in the world, uh, having over 50,000 employees. So we still want to have want to be the big animal, but we want to make the big animal much more lean, flexible than it has been in the past. And why is that needed? I think you all experience, and one of the things I learned in Sweden, Sweden as Holland is, is quite a digital society. Is this working? Yeah, it's working. Great. Um, so banking in the old days, traditional, you had branches all over the city, etc. And what we see in the industry is, for instance, if you know, I go to the airport a little bit later, you, you have an app, Uber. I'm not sure if Uber is in, in, in Stockholm. Uh, but you, you click it on, uh, you know, I'm not that well known here, so it finds you. You don't have to pay. You don't need a credit card. It's all automated. That's what people expect. That's, you know, finding, finding a taxi is a bit old-fashioned. If we look at other uh, industries like Netflix, what people expect as well is that they get recommendations. Which new movies are out there, which new series, which, you know, meet the needs you have. And in banking, we were not really doing that. We were just making products where people looked for. Another one is if you book a ticket at booker.com or uh, try Vigo or some one of the... You know, it gives you a very personal experience and gives you suggestions as well. It tells about the weather, if you want to book a car, a hotel, etc., etc. So the whole world was transforming digital. And you probably read in the newspapers as well that banking sometimes is afraid of fintechs. I think fintechs, we shouldn't be afraid of it, but we should use it as an opportunity and learn from them how we really can change the bank. So what the journey want we wanted to make is to build a digital bank, a bank based on you know, a digital platform for 500 million customers in Europe, and support that by a new organization form. And that's the agile way, way of working we implemented. That digital bank 
is a bank connected with other ecosystems in the world? Because on the one hand, and there is a great app in China, it's called WeChat. It comes from China, I'm not sure if you know it. And, and WeChat is one app which connects all the services you want. So now we have a mobile phone and we have a lot of apps and that's already a big innovation because you have everything on your mobile. But they put everything connected in one app. So it's one ecosystem and you don't have to go in or out that ecosystem. So one of the things we're looking at, how can ING become part of the ecosystem of other companies? Facebook, Apple, uh, Tesla, etc., etc. So you, you have the one experience in your app and you can do all your financial services for today and in the future, your pension, paying bills, etc., with your mobile phone connected overall. So that's a little bit of vision we have as a bank. And then we have a little bit of a clip which I think brilliantly illustrates that. Because what I was saying is that going from a traditional bank in the Netherlands with 21,000 people to the bank we have now, our building now, where we have squads and tribes working to new experience is a big journey. And when Eric gets the movie up and running, we can look at that. So technological, even on a digital bank, not always works. There we go. No, 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 go back. The world around us is changing rapidly, and the change is driven by technology. Clients have an increasing number of options in contacting those they do business with. Businesses that must be available 24-7 and provide relevant, top-notch, personal service. That applies to all commercial enterprises, including banks. Digital innovators such as Spotify and Netflix are at the forefront of such developments when it comes to tailoring their service to client needs. They have a clear concept of corporate culture and a defined approach to collaboration processes. They believe firmly in the methodology called Agile. For ING, they are important sources of inspiration in establishing a new way of working together, a new level of servicing clients. The new way of working calls for quicker reactions to changing client needs, less interdepartmental passing of the baton, fewer coordination meetings, more room for initiative, and higher levels of responsibilities for teams and individuals. So, how does it work? The fundamental unit in our future head office organisation is the squad. Squads are self-steering, autonomous teams of up to nine people, responsible end-to-end -end for their own specific customer-related mission. Squads are built around different disciplines, different areas of expertise, and different backgrounds. For example, the Squad Mortgage application concerns itself with developing and implementing the most customer-friendly and most efficient way of moving from first mortgage submission to final approval. And the Squad search engine is dedicated to developing the most customer-friendly and effective search engine for our various digital channels. In Squads, you can expect to find colleagues from marketing, product management, formula management, data analysis, user experience and IT. Sometimes more of the one or more of the other, depending on the nature of the Squad's mission. Within each squad, product ownership is assigned to one squad member. This product owner is responsible for what a squad does, is in charge of the backlog and to-do list, and determines priorities. This does not mean the product owner is the boss. Coordination between members of the same discipline takes place inside chapters. There is, for example, a chapter Data Analytics, a chapter Customer Journey Mortgages, a chapter Products Management Processes. Chapters determine how jobs should be tackled. The chapter Lead is ultimately responsible for this and also represents the hierarchy for squad members, taking responsibility for personal development, coaching and the performance management cycle of individual squad members. 
The chapter lead will perform these duties in addition to their regular day-to-day -day job in their own squad. But if squads are self-steering and autonomous, how can we ensure coordination between squads? That is where tribes come in. A tribe is a collection of squads with interconnected missions. There is a tribe securities and private banking, a tribe mortgage services, etc. As a rule, a tribe contains fewer than 150 people, coordinated by the tribe lead, who, although not the traditional boss of all tribe members, ensures that knowledge and insights are shared, establishes priorities, and allocates available budgets. The tribe lead also forms the interface with other tribes. And that's it. Well, almost. There is one more vital role, that of Agile Coach, the person who coaches individuals and squads and who helps them to grow and prosper. That, in a nutshell, is how most of ING Head Office will function in the future. Most, but not all. The Agile approach involves flexibility in adapting to the needs of the moment. The forming of tribes is very much a tailor-made thing, dependent on specific goals and circumstances. And that is an approach that may not suit all business functions, and so a degree of trial and error will help us establish what does and does not work in practice. The Agile approach is in itself agile and not cast in iron. That is what makes it such a valuable tool in achieving our goals. So I think this, this gives a good picture of how we organized and for most of you it will be quite common because that's just how the Agile well. For I think for a bank where we now have over 4,000 people working in squads and tribes, it, it comes close to a revolution. It's a completely new way because everything which had to do with hierarchy, having your own office, all the things you think about or, uh, traditional organization have gone and have now changed. A little bit of background, well, I just decided to skip this one uh, and go back to, uh, to HR. I think one of the challenges we have uh, is that we decided as HR, and Eric will talk a little bit more about that, is also become, well, organize yourself agile. And that was a little bit new because not all functions, as you see in the clip, decided to go agile. The risk function, the finance function, at the moment, that might change over time, are still organized in a traditional way. So as HR, we said we want to organize ourselves agile as well, and I'll come back to that in a second. But it's not only about organizing yourself in tribes or squads and circles, as, as we have been doing. It's also how can we have an HR portfolio supporting the business, which is more agile than it is today. Because it's very interesting to organize yourself, but I think organization is just the mean, but it's the purpose. So what are you really delivering to the business? So, first of December, the whole new HR organization and the Agile Way will go live. And what we're done going to work on and already start experimenting with in a couple of well, test pilots is which solutions can we put in place for ING to make it more agile? And we have challenges because we have labor regulations, we have labor law, uh, we have still fixed contracts. The question is, you know, should we have? Should we have a labor agreement as we currently have it? We, we bound to all kind of old-fashioned HR stuff, which we now are going to challenge and say, well, do we really keep that, or do you want to change it in a new way? So how is the org HR organization organized? For the people who knew Ulrich, Dave Ulrich wrote a book in 2000, uh, which more or less broke HR up in three buckets. Business partners, people services, administration, and the communities of expertise. That, that's technically nothing new. Um, and we adapt in the same organizational structure because we currently don't have it in place. So HR business partners are those people who work on a daily basis with our management teams and the business leaders. And their main purpose is to build those leadership teams, build those leaders, contribute to setting the people or the business strategy, so then part of the management team. And then they're responsible for the people agenda which delivers that part of the business strategy. So that's the business partners. The communities of expertise are thought leaders in their field. Leadership, talent management, uh, performance management, pensions, etc. 
and they all have dotted lines to the global organization. So here we go, myself are responsible for the Dutch organization. We go known to uh, even, you know, the challenges we have in the Netherlands and the things we put there in place going to merge that with Belgium. But I think what we're going to do as well is, is link it to the global community. So we have a global expert in leadership in the Netherlands, linked to global, we have the same in Germany, we have the same in Belgium, etc. And that will then become a global squad responsible for leadership. Then in the middle is people services, and people are services is more or less all transactional organization in HR. So every question you have as an employee about yourself or as a line manager about your team, you go to people services. So that can be a legal question. We have five, six lawyers there. It can be a medical question. We have doctors there. But it can also be a question about your lease car, your fuel arrangement, etc., etc., etc. So that's all organized in what we call people services. So how does that then work together? The idea is that people services takes all the questions of employees in a standardized, efficient way, supported by technology. So more and more questions we will, and I will have a next slide on that, we will do electronically by an app, as the bank serves the customers by an app, we HR, uh, HR serve all uh, employees by an app, and the community of expertise, they assure that we have best practice tools, processes and products available for the business partners to implement in their respective businesses. So where ING wants to be part of an ecosystem to answer the majority of the questions of the employees, but also give them insights, we also build an internal ecosystem of people services, which is mainly digital. So I have an app, and in that app I can see my team. In the new organization I have 15 direct reports responsible for certain parts of the business and the center of expertise. And I can see their salaries, I can compare the salaries, I can look at the performance ratings of the last years, etc. So the digitalization makes it really helpful to focus our business partners on the business so they don't have to answer all the questions anymore. Another part I think is interesting is that, so, so in, in the new HR organization, one more comment on that one is then, the different parts of people from people services, the business partners and the COEs, they will work in the squads as in the business as you see in the video clip. So if we develop a new leadership program, we pull it together. Someone who has experience for leadership in the global, uh, global team, the local team, some business partners, people who execute it. So we have a squad which has an end-to-end -end responsibility. What we also do, did is we put four strategic um, teams in place for the coming couple of years. And I think one of them I want to say a little bit more about. But in general, it's a way of working. That's everything in the old days which HR looked at organizational behavior, organizational design, and culture. We said, actually, that's the way of working. So we have an expertise group looking after that. Performance management, which actually means making all ING employees, so all 21,000 in the Netherlands, a little bit better every day and ensure they can perform a little bit better every day, every week and every month. Talent management and talent acquisition and craftsmanship and leadership. And craftsmanship and leadership we found out because we didn't have a team which was called craftsmanship. And we found out that in the agile way of working we really need it because the only way to assure our squads in the business are successful is that they have content driven employees sitting in those squads. So having generalists in the squads in the, uh, for the business in the tribes didn't work. Because the only way you can contribute is because of your own discipline, your own craftsmanship. Can be IT, can be marketing, can be something else. So a big theme for the coming two, three years will around being building that craftsmanship so that organization will go forward. And then it's time to hand over to Eric. And then the question becomes, thank you, the question becomes what are you willing to give up? Because obviously this change to a new focus within HR doesn't come for free. We don't want to, to bring everything to the new situation. Culture. Culture is a very important aspect. I don't think I will have to explain that to, uh, to you. And culture in the bank is um, currently it's very much siloed. 
So in an agile environment, we want to get rid of those silos and we want to get rid of those formal control mechanisms. And what we want instead is the things listed on the uh, right hand, uh, define, define purpose, define the right teams, and focus on the delivery performance. And delivery performance by dialogue. That's very important to, to, to note. So it's not the old fashioned performance management. This is in a true dialogue with people, with OKRs and stuff, to set purpose, to set goals, and then have a discussion how, how can we get there. In the bank, we have an orange code. We have defined an orange code. So this one defines the behaviors in the company worldwide. So this is a worldwide behavioral guide for the people in the organization. And in the dialogue, we can hold each other true to this code. We can have discussions on the topics on this, uh, in this code if we believe that people behave this way or not. And this is also of course, very much the way how we want to interact with our customers. Communication. Already spoke a bit about it. So purpose, a, a powerful purpose, be transparent, and again, dialogue. Dialogue and feedback culture. In an agile way of working, dialogue is the key thing. It's all about communication and talking from human being to human being or, if you like, from system to system and exchange thoughts and come to agreements on what it is that we need to do. And this slide, a colleague of mine made this uh, great picture. This tells a bit about the approach we, the, uh, we took and how we, uh, how we got here. Uh, we started in HR, was before Martin joined. We started in 2015. As a matter of fact, Pia Maria was also uh, there. She, uh, she came to visit us at the beginning of our journey and she helped us with some uh, to get us going, with, to share some thoughts on Agile HR perspective. What we did, we had many discussions with people. We did this in a collaborative way. So this was a journey where we, uh, together with the employees, together with the business partners, together with the workers' council, together with the IT partners, had discussions on what does agility mean, how can we um, come to a better, faster performance. And what is it that you will need in that new organization to perform well, to function well, and to be happy? Because we believe that you need to be happy in order to perform well, et cetera, et cetera. We had agile cafes where people exchange thoughts on what it means to, to work in an agile way. What is agility? Many people in the HR organization were not, were not familiar with the concept. So we needed to explain a bit. Um, and we, um, we had people ex um, exchange their thoughts of what it meant. We had IT, uh, working together with IT. Um, what does it mean? In IT, they already had some more experience, and we could learn from that. And then, around a couple of months ago, we had a couple of in-depth uh, sessions where, together with the people, we explored the new organization and we drew up what that organization would need to look like. So the pictures that Martin had shown you before has, have been uh, partly created together with the people. KPIs. KPIs, awful things. Um, for all of those, uh, all those of you with a lean background, you will know that KPIs can be horrible, can be the best, the ter most terrible thing you can you can uh, give an organization. So we don't want KPIs in the old-fashioned format. We want OKRs. We want performance goals, and to set, a, to have a dialogue about what it is that you will need to uh, reach a new organization. We want to run a company-wide onboarding program, so new people coming into the company, nowadays, they get washed in the ING way of working. And as a matter of fact, uh, Martin uh, was part of that. Perhaps you would like to share some thoughts, how that was? I'm still on, yeah. Um, so when I joined, and, and it's, I joined in, what was it, uh, 
April-ish. Um, I spent three weeks, uh, three weeks with all new people. I think we were 15 people, uh, going through you know quite an interesting experience where we not only had an agile coach and we had to do assignments, but we also spent, for instance, time uh, a full week in our call centers. So in a full week, we we had to be in our call centers talking with customers and understanding the questions the customers had. And after, I think, three days, we were more or less ready. We were all a bit nervous, but also giving answers to customers. So it was a great learning experience because we learned the systems, but also what, what do the customers really look for? Um, and we had a couple of assignments which really made us familiar with a new way of working. Yeah, because in that assignment, I believe you were in a scrummish way of working. You were doing something, uh, a project, doing something good to the community or organizing something. That's all part of, of this one, hire through an innovative and extensive process because we want to learn to get to know the people that come to work for us. So have a, have a deep selection at the door instead of a quick selection and then later find out that it's not a good cultural fit. Culture is very, very important. And the HLHR manifesto, for those of you not aware, um, there is an HL, HR manifesto out there. Pia Maria is one of the, the persons that uh, is the signer. And I also included uh, a tr kind of a translation by Just Leading Solutions, Fabiola Eiholzer. Uh, um, this will guide us in the upcoming months in further defining the HR solutions that we are designing. There's not a lot on this. This is the only thing. If you Google, this is the only thing you will, uh, you will get. In the Netherlands, we have now created an Agile HR workgroup from the Agile Consortium, and we will try to further specify what are the specifics of Agile HR, because we do believe that this is key for the future of our companies, because we do believe that as an Agile leader, you should take impediments away from your teams, and as an agile HR, you, we are kind of the leader that needs to take the impediments away from the organization. If you can remove the boundaries in the organization that hinder people in, col in collaborating in an effective way, we will be uh, much more successful, and the energy can flow, the dialogue can really start, and we can provide value much more faster because that's of course what it is all about so we are looking around us for agile inspiration from IT and other sections and that includes learning making mistakes a dialogue and as I said it's all about performance because agility in itself is not the goal the goal is a good performance value to the customers in a quick and fast way. And that's, in a nutshell, I guess, what our story of today was and the journey that we have started and uh, the journey that we're still on. So I guess with that, it's time for questions. Yes. Do you have any questions? Don't know. couple of uh, things uh, you uh, add on later if you if you want to uh, first of all not ev not every department decided for real some of them are just not ready yet um, the risk departments even the risk departments I have to say are experimenting with an agile way of working which of course in a bank in a financial institution for risk whoa <laughs> that's quite a thing uh, finance for finance it might be it might be more difficult, but at the same time, if it's about 
incremental value to deliver it fast and infrequent, frequently, then they can also experiment with it. But yes, true, there are some sections that are not yet working in an agile way. Will that endanger the overall system? I'm not sure. We, we, we will learn. We're on a journey. We, seriously, we, we don't know. This is a journey. This is a um, big enterprise for a big institution like, like ours, and we're discovering. Do you think the whole bank will transform into this? Over uh, time, I do. Uh, I, I think the complexity, I think there's two things. We're a global organization. In the Netherlands, we started. Uh, we're now working together with Belgium to get, you know, a common agile structure over time. Um, but what you see is, for instance, we highly regulated. So, and in the regulations, certain people have certain responsibilities. So if we're talking with the regulators and say, well, that's responsible of the, of the squad with this purpose, and they look a bit awkward to you. Uh, so we have to really start not only managing our own internal people, but also the industry and the regulators, uh, because the transparency it brings and the new way of looking at how we serve customers, I think is really amazing. But it doesn't mean that the surrounding is still there. And then we one country, the, the, the biggest country in, in the ING group, uh, with Belgium's later on together, you know, it, it will be half of the group. But then we have head office, etc. And we see seen our first tests where we roll out programs where you have a squad responsible for, for instance, our new, le new leadership program with people from different countries and global. And it's just more effective because it takes all the hierarchies and all the differences and all the problems we had away. So, but but it's, it's really by doing and showing it adds value. And so it's more like a, how do you say it, a, a big flag which gets bigger and bigger. And it's complex. One of the things that is complex is how do you free up, uh, free up, um, 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 uh, what's the word, uh, money for projects. Um, in, the old, in the old world, you hand in a project plan and with a financial, uh, with a budget, and then you are yes or no given, uh, allocated the budget. In an agile way of working, it's different. And that also for a financial institution, that's, that's a big change, a mental change. Um, it, it's a mind shift. My question is about um, working with clients who are kind of understanding that this is about transforming and changing into something new, agile or really new or something else. And they are struggling with if, if the executives have understood, have accepted this, the board has to. So somebody has made a huge decision in your bank how did that happen? Who made that? You know, where did that come from? So we can start transforming this thing. I, I think it's 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 an interesting story. The, 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 it, it was driven by the fact that you know, ING the Netherlands had to have a solution for, you know, the, the interest is low. On the other hand, we see that uh, the clients have other expectations, etc. So, and we went after reorganization, reorganization, reorganization. And at some point of time, you cannot continue with reorganizations, you know, you, you kill your own, your own organization. Um, so what happened is that a couple of people in the board uh, went visiting a lot of companies. Uh, the CEO, chief operating officer, and, and the CIO together with, with, with the CEO, they visited a lot of companies, uh, on the which uh, Spotify here in Stockholm, they went to Zappos, they went to Google, they went everywhere. And then at some point they were just having dinner and we say, well, we, when we do a little bit of this and a little bit of this and a little bit of this and we put it together, we actually have a good story. And so it, it really started with, it was almost a, you know, a boy's or a girl's dream, but it started with, with a vision and visiting and looking to another companies which has nothing to do with banking. And then they were, I think, very good in persuading the global group board in that this was the right thing to do. And the global group board, they saw it happening. Uh, they saw the results, it went very fast. There was huge energy in the organization around it. Um, so it, it was almost unstoppable. So it's, it, it started and it created energy and then it just happened. Yeah. And the energy is really tangible. Um, also because we restructured the, the, the buildings and it has become much more open and it physically changed, and um, I'm not sure if I told you, but before I didn't like to come to the headquarters. It was this, it was a closed environment, people waiting for the elevators. I, I didn't like it, but now it's, we, 
the building has opened up and also the people have opened up. And for me, it's a true example where you see that the environment truly does influence people's behavior. Before it were suits, nowadays it's jeans and whatever people want to wear based on the occasion of the day. It, it has changed, yeah. There's energy, which is good. Good point, a very good point. They themselves think they are not ready. They themselves will think that it's not for them. Um, I would not be an agile coach if I would, would question it. Um, but I do understand that in some situations, in some areas of the bank, it's more difficult to change. For instance, in our uh, encounters with global, with group HR, they are, uh, it's a different playing field. And there are different rules, different, different structures, and you have to fit in those structures. So we're now experimenting with uh, group HR, how we can work in an agile way that fits them, because everybody needs to find the agile method that fits their environment. But, but There's no one solution. Yeah, but also very uh, practical. So uh, medical, de um, medical devices, uh, I mean the, the medical department. So. I had good discussions with the medical department because they said, well, you know, Marta, really nice new organization structure. It's really nice. It came from the people, etc. but it's not for us. And of course, the medical department has some regulations. You know, there are certain things from, you know, law perspective, privacy perspective, etc. But I said, you know, you, you, you're not only responsible for if someone has a problem at work, they come to the doctor you're also responsible for the vitality and the energy in the organization. Or at least you can take that responsibility if you believe you, you can add value to that. And to add value to that, you have to participate in the leadership programs, that, you know, all the other things we do. That means you have to sit in those squads which deliver those products to the business. So where it started off with all role is really, you know, someone says, you know, I swinkle my ink ankle and have to go to 9.30 to the doctor, and that still happens, and that we have to do that, is also they're now going to participate in leadership programs, talent management programs, design of offices, etc., 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 so integrated in the squads where they can add value. But, but that is a big step. You know, it, it's new. Okay. It's new. I believe we had a remark or question. <laughs> no, so so, so I, I think um, you know the, the stock market is for the whole group, so we, we don't have separate reports for the Netherlands. I think we, we have seen a couple of things. First of all, we, we, we have a big research project going on with INSEAD, which um, uh, monitors us on a monthly or six-week basis, and we're going to do that on a couple of years. And they look at a lot of things. You know, almost every variable you can dream of, do teams choose themselves, where do they sit, etc. It's all monitored against the performance. But a couple of practicalities, our NPS, Net Promoter Score, went up. Um, we do more with less people. Uh, so on the cost-saving sides, it's dramatic. Um, it, it's almost one-third of reduction where we see that the, the output goes quicker. Uh, but for instance, if you look at mortgages, we now can do a mortgage application within a couple of days. Because it's an end-to-end -end process, it's with a certain tribe, they're responsible for it, et cetera, et cetera, where in the end day that worked from the front office to the mid office to the head office, and we needed a risk stamp and it went back and it took, if you're unlucky, a couple of weeks. And now we can do most of them in a couple of days and we want to do it in 24 hours moving forward. So I think we see those things and then if you deliver that, you can start advertising with that, and then the customers will come again. And so at the same time, I'm, I'm sorry, at the same time, we're not there yet. It's only a year. So we now also need to start a discussion, okay, what exactly, how can we tell that we did make that, that great improvement, apart from the things that Martin already mentioned?
Okay, thank you so much. We have several questions here, but we don't have the time. But thank you so much for sharing this. It was worth it, even though the, it's just a year. It's worth it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the journey, Le yeah. Already from the energy perspective, yeah. absolutely, yeah. yeah. Good to hear. Thank you so much. A big applause. Thank you.